Hello, everybody. Grab a seat. Pull up a chair. Relax. Let's chat. It's been a while since I've actually done a Let's Chat now that I think about it, and I think it's long due time for a Let's Chat video, so I apologize for making you guys wait so long for one. If you are new to the channel, uh, first and foremost, welcome. Uh, I know my growth has been pretty astronomical over the past week or two. Uh, I've seen growths of about 2,000 in a week and a half, two weeks, which is incredible, and I'm very thankful, so welcome all of you guys. I am in firm belief that my internet community is one of the best communities out there. Some of the best and coolest people have surrounded this channel, and if you're new, please enjoy your stay. I hope you stick around for a while, and if you're an oldie, make sure you make these guys feel nice and welcome. If you don't know what the Let's Chat series is, it is just a way for me to kind of air my opinions about big going-ons in the gaming industry. Uh, because my channel is indie game focused, I tend to focus on big hot button issues that are happening in the indie game scene, but I am not going to ignore AAA stuff if it happens. Uh, I say open forum because I enjoy hearing your opinions in the comment section below. I tend to reply to a lot of them, particularly on these videos. It is a, uh, it is a way for us to have a very robust conversation about what's going on, as what I tend to talk about in the Let's Chat stuff doesn't really have a clear black or white, yes or no, right or wrong kind of answer. It's very much dependent on the, uh, the, the viewer, the opinion of those who are, who are watching and those who are read it. In the background, as we are doing this, there is going to be Daisy gameplay. Do not expect pro-level gameplay. In fact, I don't know if much even happens uh, between the scenes that I've recorded. Uh, at one point, I do meet up with Dean, so you'll probably see me hanging out with him uh, in there. But you won't hear much because my current commentary is going to be kind of overlapping all of that. It's just something for you to keep your eyes on if you are going to watch something. This week is an interesting one. It's, um... This particular Let's Chat, this, this Let's Chat video is going to be touching on a topic I think is very important to me and to a lot of you. And that is the announcement, uh, or I have air quotes around that, announcement, that Dean Rocket Hall is leaving as the lead developer of DayZ at the end of 2014, beginning of 2015. This is an interesting topic because there's more to it than what is first kind of met. Um... You know, initially people are looking at it and going, oh my god, he's taking his money and is leaving. Ignoring the fact that he has said over the past year that once the game is an official beta stage, he plans has planned on stepping down for a long time. He is far away from his home. He lives in Prague right now, and that's not anywhere near his home. He has put many years, his heart and soul, into this game, and has seen a lot of what his promises through so far. And the game's not close to done. He's not close to being done with the game. He's even said that after he does leave the game, that he will be voicing his opinion on the Daisy development after it continues without him, meaning he will always be a presence within the Daisy community like he has been. Now, the other quote that he talks about is, uh, that is mentioned rather, is that he thinks Daisy is a fundamentally flawed concept and is not the perfect multiplayer game he wants it to be. And it can't be because that's not the concept. And that's something we're going to talk about too because the idea that he says that Daisy is a fundamentally flawed multiplayer game is open to interpretation. It's a personal opinion, and, and he maybe should have prefaced it by saying it, but this is just kind of what happens when you don't really have the AAA publishers helping you, or not helping you, but preventing you from speaking with people publicly. You're going to say things that people are going to kind of get all up in arms about, and this is one of them. Do I think he should have said it? I think he still should have said, spoken his mind. He should maybe just thought about a little bit how he was going to say it. What I think he meant, and I, I'm pretty sure most people would agree with me, even him, he himself would agree with me, is when he talks about being a fundamentally flawed concept, he has in his mind this vision for the perfect multiplayer game. He hasn't really said what that vision is. It's, it's very much conceptual in his mind. And he will, continue, he will begin to work on that perfect multiplayer game when he creates his own studio. The thing is, we're not going to be seeing any of this next game that he talks about for years and years and years. We're not really worried about that. DayZ was always an experiment. This is a mod he had created as an experiment that kind of blew up and became something else. He didn't create this mod with the idea of going for this perfect multiplayer game. He created this mod because he saw this niche uh, in, in this genre, the survival genre, that he thought would be a lot of fun and he could fill, and I think he, he did a very good job. He, it's very much a militaristic survival game with zombies in it, essentially. 
and it's not the perfect multiplayer game he's envisioned, so be it. That does not mean, and I think that's what a lot of people have a problem with, it does not mean that Daisy's a bad game. For some reason, people automatically assume that he, since Rocket has said this is not, you know, Daisy is fundamentally flawed as a concept for whatever he's talking about, they automatically mean that, oh my god, he's been lying to us this whole time. This game is never going to be what he promised it was going to be. It is going to be a failed game. It's going to be bad. Have you been having fun with DayZ? If the answer is yes, then it's not a bad game. Not only that, he is not going to go back on his promises for the game just because he doesn't believe that a particular, uh, his particular perfect multiplayer game is not DayZ does not mean that the promises he's made for DayZ are not going to be seen through. They're totally separate things. His promises for the game are promises because he believes he can accomplish them. Um, what he has as an idea for a perfect game is still conceptual and idealistic, and we don't not not really something you should be thinking about. And to have people flip out about that actually really bothers me because, you know, we live in a time now in indie games, and this is, you know, very important, where we don't have to worry about the AAA publishers pushing particular aspects of gaming on us anymore. Um, you know, it just like froze. Name a time 10 years ago, five years ago even, where we have had the level of communication between consumers and the actual developers of the game that we have now with indie game stuff. It, it, it baffles me. It bothers me that we get so upset about you know these indie developers doing these certain things. And it, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword in all honesty uh, for the indie developer and for the consumer. Uh, it's a double-edged sword for the indie developer because on one side, you have unparalleled communication with the people who are going to be buying your game. You don't have to listen to the to publishers like EA and 2K breathing down your neck saying, here's your deadline, uh, yeah. this is what we want, no, nix that, this is what we want, I don't care if it's your dream game, this is what we want because this is what we know will sell. That's not there. That's not there. We don't live in that age. Instead, you have direct communication with the people and the target audience you're working with, as well as being able to develop the game you have always wanted to develop. Would games like DayZ, Project Zomboid, Don't Starve, be the games that they are today without the ability to communicate directly with the developers? No. No is the answer. We would not have Project Zomboid becoming this awesome survival game that has been molded and changed and, um, you know, tweaked and fixed. And having them bring in modders as part of the development team, we would have that luxury, that amazing thing that these, these developers are able to provide without the indie game scene as it is today. The freedom, the creativity, the ingenuity that developers are able to run with now far surpasses Anything I have ever seen a AAA game in the past five years produce. Ever. Maybe more. And it's amazing. And I wouldn't have it any other way. The problem comes on the other side of the sword. Where the vocal minority is heard more often than they ever have a right to be heard. See, one of the good things that AAA publishers do is they almost shield the developers from all the negativity and all this, this flack they could get for making changes to their core gameplay. When something gets changed in Project Zomboid that somebody doesn't like, you will see a thread on it immediately in the forums, on Reddit, on the Steam forums. Why don't we have save when we want? Why don't we have uh, NPCs yet? Why is multiplayer taking so long? All these things that happen. Why is this delayed? Why did you change the engine? The, the vocal minority is able to, to be so vocal in indie development because nothing is being hidden from them. They are able to see every step of development from pre-alpha all the way to full release if some of those developers are lucky enough to get there. And it can be disheartening, man. It's to watch, you know, and to, to keep in mind, I have direct communications with a lot of these indie developers like the Indie Stone, like Rocket, like a lot of other people. Um, I can expressly he tell you that you know specifically speaking with a lot of indie devs that the vocal minority can get them down it can bring them down it can slow production and what these these vocal minority don't understand is that they're lucky this is how development is sometimes features get nixed sometimes features get added sometimes things get changed sometimes the engine gets tweaked all these things are part of development 
So when something like what Dean does gets announced because, you know, hey, we have communication and Dean is one of the most amazing and open developers in the indie scene that we have ever seen. Um, And when he says something like, hey, I'm leaving, something he has said time and time again over the year, and we see things blow up on Reddit, that's when people like me facepalm. Because what it tells me is that people don't listen. All they do, whenever something positive gets brought up, they don't listen to it. The vocal minority. How often do you see appreciation threads? Or, hey, this is a cool feature thread. Very rarely. How often do you see hate threads? Almost every friggin' day. Can we change this? I would like this. Blah, blah, blah. Suggestions are fine. Like that. But when it's threads like, how dare he take our money and run it? Oh, my God. I fucking facepalm. I double facepalm. I triple facepalm. It it bothers me. Because what Eurogamer.net did was they did this huge interview, right? And they picked the one thing that would be clickbait. The one thing that would get the most attention, and they made it the title. Dean Rocket Hall leaves DayZ. Something that everybody has known, by the way, that is going to be happening for a very long time. And those who don't necessarily do their research now see this. Not only does they, do they neglect to see that it's going to be at the end of the year, 2014 and the beginning of 2015... Not only do they neglect the fact that Dean has said he's going to stay on the team if they need him, do they neglect that he's been away from family, friends, for years, that he's put his heart and soul into this game for years. Not only do they neglect all of that, they don't do the simple research to see that this is going to be something that is going to be done for a long time. And they, you know, of course, all this hullabaloo, the game's dead, when he leaves, what's going to happen? Oh my god, Daisy's going to crash. Do you really think that's what's going to happen? What happened when Notch left Minecraft? Some would argue Minecraft became a better game, right? Behind Dean Rocket Hall, there is a development team of about 50 plus people. Somebody else will become the lead developer. Bohemia will definitely keep putting money into this game because it's a fucking blow up success. It is in the top three Steam sellers and it has been for months. Do they, do you really think they're going to stop doing it? Do you really think that the development team doesn't have the same visions as Dean? That they don't have the same vision that you all have for what you want Daisy to be? That, you know, Brian Hicks and all these other wonderful developers are not going to be able to perform without Dean there? Of course not, guys. The game is not going to change. Hell, maybe the game will get better. And guess, and wait till modding becomes a part of Daisy, which it will be. That's going to be huge. In a year from now, when Dean steps down, or whatever happens, and he leaves, the game is not dead. The game will not cease development. The game will not stop being what it is. And the vocal minority will never shut up. I understand this. But if I can get through to one of you, one of you people who is part of that vocal minority, to understand that mm, this whole indie scene, the fact that we are able to d- directly communicate with the developers is a gift, a wonderful gift the gaming gods has, have given us over the past few years. To understand that blowing up about these small little things, these things that are not necessarily game-changing, that are not you know, going to ruin your game then hopefully I've done my job. I really want to know what you guys think about this Dean Rocket Hall thing. Is it that big a deal? I don't think so. I really don't. He, again, has been a phenomenal developer. He has talked many, many times with all of his viewers on Reddit, or consumers on Reddit, on the forums, through interviews, through live streams. He has been one of the most open people, and because he's been so open, he is now getting flack for it, unfortunately. Because he continued to be open, and said something offhanded, off the cuff, that has been taken out of context and it's insane now the idea of him not being able to produce his own you know this this that that daisy is a fundamentally flawed concept again it's a totally different beast it is not a fundamentally flawed concept and we already talked about it i don't want to talk about it again but keep all of that in mind Please, sound off in the comment section below. I'm very curious what your thoughts are on the whole situation. And what you think of this whole new openness that we as, as people, YouTubers, consumers, etc. have with these indie devs. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm very curious. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I look forward to hearing 
all of what you have to say. I'll see you in the comments section. Bye-bye.